style that I'm trying where basically doing the same thing that Drac does. I'm gonna be yelling at the blaster in front of the camera now so that you guys don't have to think about what facial expression I'm making while I'm yelling. You can actually say the facial expression that I'm making when I'm yelling at them. This is still experimental, so I don't have a microphone or anything, so the audio is gonna be a bit quiet for a while. I'll try and fix that in editing later, but for right now, just try not to worry about it. I have a plan up my sleeve if this review style ends up being better than what I originally do. So with that said, let's just get on to the blaster. We're gonna be reviewing Oh, this is a beautiful looking nugget, isn't it? It's actually just a Zombie Strike Scavenger, but I gave it a paint job because I hated the way it looked before. Now I like the way it looks. It looks good. And I hate calling my own work good, but I genuinely love the way this thing came out. I basically just painted the entire thing gunmetal gray and then added some extra details by hand later. Unfortunately, there's an inconsistency with the priming grip. I kind of ran out of paint. So it didn't work all the way. I couldn't flip it over and paint the other side. So I'm gonna have to fix this later once we get more paint. But I desperately wanted to do this review and see how this actually looked all put together. And I'm happy with it. I mean, I'd be happy with it just like this because chances are it's just gonna stay on the wall. And yet it is my favorite zombie strike blaster. And I genuinely mean that for a variety of reasons, which I will go through throughout the course of this video. So first of all, I have called this design the Guazinator. Why have I called it the Guazinator? You're probably not asking because nobody cares. Well, a roller coaster called Guazi came out in Bush Gardens and it was quite a big deal. And then they closed it, and then they turned it into Iron Guazi, which was basically the same thing, but better in every single way. They basically did that with this blaster. This was the Zombie Strike Sling Fire, and then they made it better in every single way. Okay, maybe not every single way. There's still a few things that the Sling Fire does a whole lot better than this blaster, but let's not worry about that right now. First of all, let's just take the stock that I also painted and the barrel that I also painted off and go over this blaster as is, and we'll go over all the attachments later. So first of all, starting off with the design of yeah, I kind of obviously have biases here, but try to ignore the paint for a while and just look at the actual shell itself. That is a ridiculous amount of detail and it looks great. Even with its obnoxious orange, like bright neon orange paint job, the design still looks great and they still have a ridiculous amount of designing and details on the other side, which you don't usually see out of Nerf blasters. E.g. the brain saw. The whole right side of that blaster looked great, the left side looked like rubbish. And they pulled out all the stops for this one, including the expertly themed stock, which also had detail on both sides. The expertly themed barrel, which obviously had detail on both sides, including a painted Nerf logo. And even the magazine details on both sides. They really outdid themselves with the details on this blaster. It's almost like they actually cared about it. Who would have thought? I just changed the camera angle because it kept cutting off the top of my head. But there were two other attachments that came with it, including this scope, which is super mediocre and doesn't really do anything that it's trying to do very well, as this thing, which is conveniently set, set to hold a magazine, but it just looks ridiculous. It's just this big gray brick that's on the side of your blaster all the time, and it's really funny and it doesn't work very well. And then there's this flashlight, which has the same colors, but I actually really like. It's like a screwdriver with a flashlight in it. You gotta be some serious MacGyver to get that to work. I really wanted to paint this to look like the blaster, but I couldn't figure out how to get it open. I didn't want to risk covering the lens with paint, so that couldn't work. But I know what 1% of you guys are thinking, but Tessera, what if you put it all together? What's the blaster going to look like? Well, don't worry, I'll show you, even though it doesn't really work that well because the paint job doesn't fit the scope or the, uh, the flashlight, but I'll do my best anyway. Stock and barrel. Doing all this with one hand sucks. Magazine, that's the wrong way. And lay flashlight. Yeah, it looks pretty dope, even though the scope legitimately kills it a little bit. If you flip it over, it's not too bad. I don't like the scope. I like it without the scope better. And I would have I would have preferred to paint the flashlight, but you already know how that went. So even if you take the flashlight off, I mean, if you, could have, if you can take it off, yeah, it still looks really good otherwise. What about the ergonomics though? Because I haven't touched on that at all. Well, it's got a main grip, kind of a foregrip, and a stock, even though the stock is removable. And there's one thing I want to talk about with the stock later that you probably noticed is a little bit weird. But the main grip is actually really nice. There are wasps flying around up there, so if I keep randomly looking up, it's because there's wasps. 
But the main grip is actually really cool, especially if you don't have that thing in the way, even though you do have to have that thing in the way. The trigger pull is atrocious. I don't like the trigger pull at all. It's super heavy and it just feels really unreliable, like it's gonna break or something. It's, it's not very good. Even though I will say the action of priming it is buttery smooth and it just works very well. I don't think this ring pull was designed the best. I think the sling fires was designed a lot better because this is just really thick and chunky and it's really weird to hold. As for the stock, yeah, it's really comfortable. It looks, it looks short, but because of the way that you hold this blaster, it's actually a really good pull and it works. As for the foregrip, ugh, stupid Hasbro, but it does work all right to just put your hand there. Overall, the ergonomics are pretty solid. Oh no, I forgot that it comes with this thing, Jolt gun toy thing, I guess. You put two darts in it and then you, you it's it's like you can't really hold it because of the way that this stupid thing is set up. It's super uncomfortable. And then, my gosh, what is this? That is awful. Oh, it's awful. And then you shoot it and chances are it's gonna fart out the second dart for some reason it didn't. And it's, it really sucks. But then here's the, here's the gimmick. You you see the stock, you see this goofy looking design. You can actually put the, you see you see where I'm going with this? This is, this is the best idea ever. Doesn't that look great? And it just like immediately falls off. All right, never mind. It actually holds really well now for some reason. Probably because of the paint, but I genuinely couldn't get this thing to stay in the stock before, so whatever, I don't know. Let's just continue with the functionality. How does this thing work? Well, this is the ring pull or the lever action. You push this thing forward, you put a magazine in, you pull it back, you fire once. If you push this little switch, however, watch this. That was a shot. That was another one. It's got slam fire. It actually has slam fire! The first lever action blaster to ever have slam fire! All right, yeah, I'm doing the firing demo, and yes, that's the zombie target. I'm gonna vacuum in here later anyways today, so it doesn't matter. I'm gonna be doing nine shots normally, and then nine shots with slam fire! Let's go. to my opinion, I want to point out the thing with the stock, because you can see the stock goes on right, but what you might not know is the fact that this stock attachment point is literally just upside down. It's literally upside down. If you try to put a stock on normally, it just, it doesn't fit, and no matter what you do, it just won't go in. If you put it on upside down, it clicks right in, and it is stable and solid, and it's made super well, and I can't believe that they actually solved this problem by doing something so ridiculously simple. That's just hilarious and genius to me, and I absolutely wanted to point it out. So what do I think of the Scravenger? Yeah, this is my favorite zombie strike blaster for a myriad of reasons. Not only does it just work well and shoot well and is very comfortable and basically just a rebirth of the, of the sling fire, which was arguably the best zombie strike blaster for a while, but it's also basically a modulus blaster with the amount of attachment points that you've got on it. It looks absolutely amazing and slam fire. I could go on about how much I appreciate them putting slam fire in this for hours, but I'm not going to do that because the review is basically over already. I think the Scravenger is an amazing blaster. I mean, it really is. They pulled out all the stops for this one when really nobody even asked for it, but then when it came out, everybody realized just how much they wanted it. I don't know if you can still get these, but if you can, I'll put a link in the description where you can buy one. With that said, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you're new, like if you enjoyed, and comment down below. Do you prefer this review style or my old review style, which I'm kind of trying to phase out because I've been having a lot more problems trying to film those reviews, which I'll go over in the next stream if you guys want me to. So with that said, thanks for watching. Bye.